I went to Berkeley because it had the reputation of being the top graduate programs in hard rock geology. My first year as a graduate student uh, was Chuck Meyer's first year as a professor. He, he had, and so we, without really going there because of Chuck Meyer, I gravitated almost immediately. He was such a stimulating and likable person. I was part of the first group of graduate students that Chuck had. The others are Bob Fournier and Herb Shaw and Roy Woodall and uh, Julian Henley. That, that, that was a, our, our group. He was very informal and wanted people to call him by his first name and, and, uh, and we had all kinds of arguments among ourselves in the group doing and, and went on field trips with Chuck uh, to Yarrington and to Butte and other places that he arranged. Completely in, indoctrinated his philosophy into all of our heads and all sorts of things that we learned about Chuck from Chuck that was beyond just the factual aspects of things, but philosophy of how to look at ore bodies. And I applied for a job with Anaconda. <laughs> because I had heard a lot about Anaconda from Chuck and I also did my thesis at Bingham and, and a, had, uh, applied for a job with Kennecott. I got job offers from both Anaconda and Kennecott and Kennecott's paid better than Anaconda's but Anaconda's job offer was to go to Chile and, and participate in the opening of a new mine and that sounded a lot more exciting than going back to Bingham where I'd spent a lot of time already uh, doing my thesis. Reno, Reno Sales uh, is respons was responsible for Chuck Meyer coming to work for Anaconda in Butte. He, Chuck was a student of Grattan, L.C. Grattan at Harvard, and he and Reno didn't agree on, uh, Grattan and Reno Sales knew each other and didn't agree on important things like secondary versus primary calcocyte formation and various topics that but and Chuck Meyer was one of Grattan's probably prime prize students and so and Reno had the concept that he wanted to document the alteration and the and the sulfide mineralization in the veins in Butte Reno had been responsible primarily to starting the Anaconda mapping system as a <coughs> practical matter because of lawsuits related to claim ownerships and veins that were faulted off and displaced over here and had to be uh, it had to be proven not only uh, in the field but also in a court of law that this vein over here was the faulted piece of this vein over here and and so the, the whole system of, anacon of systematically mapping the strike and dip of the vein and the fault and how it cuts it and all of just the most basic part of the anaconda system was developed by Reno uh, Horace Winchell who was the person that hired Reno. They started this systematic way of mapping at breast height and projecting it that way on paper and systematic record keeping. Reno was a very organized guy and, and you know recognized that it lacked the the uh, understanding of the alteration halos around the veins and and what they meant and and uh, and also the these sulfide assemblages the zoning and different details of that and so Reno wanted a more scientific description of the of the mines that then was coming out of just the basic red and blue lines. He hired Chuck to come and, and do a more scientific study and he took it took and 
in spite of the fact that he didn't agree with Grattan on a lot of things, he uh, he he wanted one of Grattan's students, and uh, Chuck was the man, and and Bill Swain was happened to be a young geologist who was a Berkeley graduate. He actually had a lot to do with the physical installation of the first Butte Geological Laboratory and setting it up. Bill was a practical guy and could do things with his hands. It was the first time that, uh, probably, that a, at that time a modern laboratory was brought to the mine. The usual pattern had been for people to go to the mine and take the rocks back to the laboratory, but the, the Reno's idea was we're going to have the laboratory at the mine site. Uh, Chuck, uh, of course, published uh, papers with Reno Sales that became classic papers of wall rock alteration around the veins and, and the sulfide zoning of the veins. When Chuck resigned from Anaconda and went to, went to Berkeley, well, of course, Chuck didn't leave Anaconda totally. He, he, he remained as a consultant to Anaconda, so he never really separated totally from, and he never did any consulting work for anybody else. So he was in touch with Reno uh, even after he became a, a Berkeley professor. Reno would visit Berkeley maybe once or twice a year just to have come and talk to Chuck. And uh, Reno by that time had soon, I think he had retired as the chief geologist and Vin Perry had already become the vice president and chief geologist. But Reno still out of friendship and interest uh, made a periodic annual or biannual visit to Berkeley. And that's where I first met him. And he, Chuck introduced all of us to him. Uh, he was a tough uh, disciplinarian and wanted things done this way. On the door of the Butte Geological Office uh, in the Hennessy Building, there was a, a, the names of the chief geologists were uh, Reno H. Sales and Merle H. Geidel, and some irreverent young geologists wrote underneath. Jesus H. Christ. <laughs>